Good evening, everyone, and welcome to our Seniors Connection. We're glad to have, be with us and you to be with us tonight. And to the people that are here in person, we had a good congregation here tonight. It's really a blessing. Glad to see you, and hope that many of you are watching online that are having possibility maybe not to be here. You can't be here. It's just so good to have you tonight. And without holding anything up, we're going to get right to the music because we've got Bob Swanson's got something to say. And one thing about Bob and me. Uh, we've both been vaccinated with a big trolling needle, so we got to hurry up and get to what we're getting there. It's never going to happen. And I won't talk about Peter. I see him back there. He'll get me when he comes up. But all right, let's stand now. Dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you for this time together and thank you for your mercy and your grace. And just pray, God, that we're not here for a show. We're here to enjoy your love and your mercy and God to feel a move of your spirit in this room tonight and wherever people are that might be watching it. So just thank you now, Lord, in advance for what you'll do for us in this next few minutes. All right. In him we live and move. We ready to go. And you can clap. You can do whatever. In him we live and move. Thy faithfulness, thy faithfulness, with 
my mouth will I make known Thy faithfulness to all generations I will sing of the mercies of the Lord Forever I will sing of the mercies of the Lord Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Blessed and assured. This is a wonderful old song. And we add the new tag that we do at the end. We'll come back with it. Blessed assurance. Jesus is mine. Hallelujah. He's here with us tonight. Let's worship him now as we get into this and go. Amen. Blessed assurance. Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. There is salvation. Purchased of God, born of His Spirit, washed in His blood. Oh, this is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. Oh, this is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. Perfect submission, all is at rest. I and my Savior am happy and blessed. Watching and waiting, looking above. Filled with His goodness, lost in His love. Oh, this is my story, this is my song. My Savior all the day long. Oh, this is my story. This is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. Amen. We came to praise Him tonight. Hallelujah. We came to worship Him. There's a tag that's been added on. Oh, what a Savior, wonderful Jesus. Death could not hold you. You are victorious. Praise to the risen King. Just worship Him tonight. Here's what you're here for. Let's just open our hearts up to Him and let His sweet Holy Spirit come down and permeate your body and mind tonight. Amen. Yes, 
it's all about folks when you can go and you can feel the move of God's Holy Spirit when you're singing and worshiping that's what we're here for if we're just trying to be beautiful notes and stuff I'm sure it wouldn't be up here but we're here to praise the Lord <laughs> God has a sense of humor he let me get up here and I can't sing but that's a, you know who knows but you know the last two courses will go says give thanks with a grateful heart he is so good. He is so good to us to give us peace. Let's worship him now. Give faith with a grateful heart. Give thanks to the Holy One. Give thanks because he's given Jesus Christ his Son. Give
so much this night for your presence, Lord, in our lives, God, that people can see in us the glory of you. When they meet us, they know there's something different. There's a peace. There's a joy. There's something in our lives because we have you on the inside, still working on the outside, but oh, what a joy and change in our life. Thank you, Jesus. God, I pray right now, you know the ones that are in need. There are many within our church, many of you out there that are suffering and are, can't be with us for different reasons, God. The prayer chain is still pretty long with people that need things. There are several people within our church just have continuing situations going on. They're going through some heartbreaking situations now. Do you know what? He knows where they are right now. He knows where you are. He knows what your need is. Let's just lift up one time before we close this. Dear Lord, God, you know out there, the ones that are watching by live stream, God, to those that are here. And God, just pray that your power would reach out to them, Lord. And God, let them feel your sweet Holy Spirit. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. You may be seated. Thank these people up here for their help so much. Whoops. Dropping everything. Oh, you're going to get, no, you get me out of trouble. Let me get my, Lord, if I drop my schedule, don't tell them what's going to happen. Bob might be up here for two hours if I drop that. <clears throat> no, excuse me. <laughs> All right, you winding up over there, Bob? You ready? Okay, a couple of announcements that we got coming up. We're going to do at least one more of these two weeks from now. And as far as I know, Pete's going to be up. You're in for a treat that night. He's going to tell us what we ought to be doing and not doing. He's got something good in working with the... In, in our lives, and our body, it takes a dedication and something to go. So we look forward to that, unless somebody changes our mind between now and then. But we'll, but we'll go with that. Now, next week, a small group, I think, is this the last one or the next to last one, Pete? I don't remember. We've got two left? Okay. One, so everybody, your, your night service, the Friday morning with the seniors, if you want to be, uh, be in on that uh, Zoom, we have that available. Uh, and let's see, what else have I got here? All right, now starting in June, we won't be doing this anymore, not live stream. We want you to come. So those of you out there, it's time to come back and be with us if you can. We've done this for a while now. We, we need you here. We got a good group here tonight. And I wish you could pan and see the whole room, but it's so good to see everybody. But we're going to have on June the 5th, and you don't have to remember these dates, we'll send them out, a patriotic night. On Saturday night at 5 o'clock, wear your red, white, and blue. We're going to do a picnic-style thing. You don't have to bring the picnic. We'll take care of that. But we're going to have military guys. We're going to have some of our guys in our church dressed in their uniforms, some other things, just to have a good night of fellowship with that. Now, the end of June, June 25th, we'll do another live stream connection. Just kind of check your temperature during that time. And uh, Pastor Peter will be doing that. He'll have a big thermometer here going to see what's going on. And... July, we're going to do a Christmas in July on the 24th of July. 
since somebody's house wasn't open and available at Christmas for some strange reason, we weren't able to go. And boy, did we miss that. When I asked God what they mean, what did you miss? Christmas at <laughs> Peter and Jean's house. <laughs> well, we're not going to surprise them and show up at their house. They probably would not appreciate that. But we'll have, uh, Belinda assures me, we'll have Christmas trees and everything else going then. So we'll, we'll have that in here and then. And then August, now, now you better have special prayer for this. To those, those of you that know Murphy Whitman, getting Murphy to commit is just really kind of good, you know, it's difficult. But he's been a ball boy for the Saints for 40 something years, I think. He's the longest tenured one. And he's got a lot of stories of ball boys behind the scenes. So we're going to do a Saints kickoff and the thing with that. If we can get him here, if not, Mike's going to have to ad lib. That's just hilarious to it. And one final announcement, and I'll give it over to Bob. Uh, there's still a need on Sunday mornings for some help in children's church. If you can just come be a helper. You're not having to teach the class. And I'm sure they still need a, a teacher or two if you feel led to go that direction. But they definitely need, where are they, we, are in need of some people that will come and, and stay with, just sit in with them and be the helpers. Like I help out some with mops. They just need a go, gopher sometimes just to help them out and be a part. So be thinking about that. Be praying about that. Children's Church, I mean, I think Children's Church jumped to 20-something the first Sunday, about 100 this last Sunday, I hear. So it, it picked up in a hurry. So the kids are there, and things are all rearranged for it. So they need your help. So if any of you can do that, and it's not every Sunday, it's about every four or five weeks that you'll be. That's what Belinda promised me anyway, that it would be that. So, all right, with further ado, I'm going to get Bob to come up and share with us for a few minutes. And one thing we've tried to do, all of the men that uh, come forward are men that love the Lord, men that are on fire for the Lord, <laughs> and don't want to shut up about the Lord. So that's a good thing. So without saying anything else, Bob, it's all you. <laughs> well, I want to get on. Thank Farrell. Um, I don't know if y'all have been blessed these last few weeks, but Kay and I have really been blessed coming back and being here. And just want to give Farrell and the team a big hand and, and Ronald back there in the back and Pete. And thank you guys. It's so meaningful to us. Um, I want to ask you, did everybody get one of these? Okay. Uh, open it up a little bit and look toward the back. You've probably seen this before. And I'd like to give you an assignment. You think you're in school, don't you? Welcome to school. This is Bob's school. Okay. And uh, you'll notice that there is a, on the page that says, uh, wait a second, there's a page that talks about a course that's coming up in this, in this uh, booklet, and, but it's not the Alpha course. <laughs> so if you, want, if you look here and you find that there's a course in here, just when you share this to folks, tell them about the Alpha course, Okay. They can come to our Alpha course, they can go online, they can go on the app, because, but your assignment is to give this to somebody this week, doctor's office, friend, family member. If you want some more, my friend Bob's got some more, wave your hand, Bob. He's got some more right in front of his place, get you some more, give some more out. But I want to pick up a little bit where Frank was two weeks ago, and we want to be evangelists for Jesus. And so this is a plug, okay? Uh, now I want to ask you about, uh, I want to tell you about some stories tonight, I'm going to be a storyteller. I like stories, and I like true ones, because sometimes all the ones I don't hear are true. <laughs> so a few years ago, some of you guys went with us to Jackson, Louisiana, to a men's retreat. Some of you guys may remember that. And it was in a, just, we just had the LCC guys only at that time. Went to a little chapel out there in the woods, and uh, they had two assignments. Keith started off, and he walked in and said, guys, we're going to fast this weekend from two things. We're going to fast from food, and we're going to fast from talking. That second one about kill me. <laughs> he said, once you're out of this building, you can't talk to anybody other guys because I'm giving you an assignment. Don't talk to anybody. I said, okay. So the first assignment I'd like you to consider, I'd like to give this assignment. I'll give you the first assignment was to give one of these out. The second assignment is the same assignment Keith gave us. And he said, what I'd like you to do is take a piece of paper and draw a line down the middle like this and put a line across the top. 
On the left-hand side, men, he said, I want you to list all those men in your life that's had a godly influence in your life. Go back to your room and write them down. Now, when you get that list, start writing the things that they did for you that meant so much to you. Because, obviously, they came to mind. Start writing some things down. Now, when you get home, I'd like you to call those folks, those men are still alive, obviously. I'd like you to call some. I'd like you to write some or text them. We use text today. Why don't you contact some of those guys and tell them how much they meant to you? Because they may not be in a good place right now, but they need to hear from you. I said, okay. So I got home, and um, when I grew up, I was, grew up in a little town in Kansas, Newton, Kansas. And the pastor we had at that time was one of those guys was, he was a pastor, he was a youth pastor, he was a, he was a janitor. He, <laughs> small churches, you did everything. Yep. Yep. <laughs> But he got the youth involved, and we had cleanup day. We did Awana. Um, we did the ushers. He let us count the money. I mean, we, he let the youth help all around the church. And he had youth at his house, and he, was a great, he had a great sense of humor. His wife would always cook special stuff for us, like cookies like this, but they were homemade, you know, and she'd have them out there for the youth. And so we had great times at his house. So after I got out of high school, I moved away from home and hadn't seen him in many, many years. So Boyd in Be Boyd's name was on my list. So I called my mom and I said, Mom, do you happen to have the phone number for Mr. Boyd White? She said, yeah, I got it. I said, well, I haven't talked to him in years, but Boyd is on my list of those men that meant a lot to me. And I'd like to call him. She said, good. So I called their house and uh, somebody answered the phone. I heard some strange noise in the back. And I said, this is Bob Swanson. I went to call and tell you I got a, was at a men's retreat. And uh, I was asked to share about some men that had a big influence in my life and still heard a strange noise. And all of a sudden, this lady came on the phone. I said, hello. She said, this is Miss Betty. I said, this is Bob Swanson. And I just got back from men's retreat and want to tell you, your husband had a tremendous influence in my life, and you did too. And uh, I want to share that with you because you guys, when I was in high school, you all had a, had a policy that if the car was in the driveway, any youth could come to your house, stop by, come in, sit on the front porch, swing, tell us what's going on, go out and work in the garden with us. But you can stop anytime you want and come see us because sometimes you want to tell your parents about stuff. When you're in high school, there's certain things you want to tell somebody else. He said, you come tell us. It's private. We'll talk about it. I'll pray with you. And that would mean a lot when you're in high school. Because you're going through a lot of stuff in high school in those years. So uh, when Miss Betty got on the phone, and I told her who I was and why I called. And I want to thank them for what they meant in my life. She just started crying. So why are you crying, Miss Betty? She said, because Boyd has Parkinson's. And he couldn't talk. She said, you have no idea what your phone call meant today. So I'm going to ask you all, women, think of women, men, think of men, make your list, call them, text them. There's somebody who's here from you today that meant something in your life that helped you grow spiritually. So as a pastor, uncle, friend, brother, whoever it was, make a list and ask God to show you which one of those folks you should contact. Because I believe you'll be a blessing in their life as those people have been a blessing in yours. Okay. Um, the second man on my list was a man named Warren Nelson. Warren Nelson um, was the man that hired me in the insurance business. And thanks to my wife, I'm in that business today because she had a word that I should go to work for this man. Because <laughs> I got interviewed by three companies and I wasn't sure. And she said, you need to go work for Warren Nelson. That's the man. He was a godly man from our church. We went to First Baptist Counter at that time. And uh, he... he uh, was one of the godliest men I ever met in my life as far as a businessman. And uh, he gave us a story um, about a rose. He said, when he, we, I came to work for him, he said, before I can come to work, he said, Kay and I had to come to his office four weeks in a row after church. He would tell me more about the business and he'd pray with us. He said, I'm not hiring anybody until you know that you know that you're going to be in this business. It's not just I'm just hiring you for a job. Because for a Christian, he said, I'm hiring you because you will be a missionary in the insurance business. You're not just selling insurance. You're also selling assurance. I said, okay. So then he said, now I want to tell you about a rose. This is like any business. He's pulled up, he's told me a rose, and he said, okay, this is the smell part on the top. This is the benefits. This is the people you like to work with. This is the company we got to work with. This is the conventions you go to. But every single job has thorns. And everybody and people quit because of thorns. And it says not just in this business they quit. They quit in relationships because of thorns. They quit church because of thorns. 
And it says, not because the beautiful part, they quit because of the thorns. He said, understand, lots of parts of life have thorns. So I want to explain to you something. Do not quit. Thorns is part of life. But if you quit, you'll regret it. So I said, okay, I trust you. Because he was helping me out to get started in the shoe business. He also said, um, when people came into his office, he said, we sell life insurance to protect families' income. But we also sell eternal, I, I want to talk to you about eternal assurance. So anybody came in as a uh, vendor, an agent, a customer, he would, he, he's such a gracious, we'd tell jokes for about 15 minutes. And they'd say, okay, and he said, now we're down to business. <laughs> he's talking about the insurance business, but he said, before we leave my office, I've got to tell you about something that's just as important about money for your family is where you're going for eternity. And I want to talk to you about your, where you're going when you pass. We've got the money going where, but where's your heart going? Where's your soul going? And he was just incredible to share with people him in his office. He was so popular in our company that the company would ask him to speak in national conventions. And he, was, he would tell humor, tell what happened in our agency. At that time, New Orleans agency was number one in the country in our company. So Warren would get up and tell some jokes, tell the stories about, the comp, about how, what built our agency. And then he'd say at the end, he said, I've got to share you why we're successful. We have some successful business principles and practices in our agency, but the reason was we want to honor God and honor our country. And before and then every talk on a nationwide basis, sales talks, nationwide conventions, he shared the gospel. Of course, the company executives didn't like that too much. So they'd say, uh, Warren, you can't talk about that God stuff. And he said, I don't talk about the God stuff, and I don't talk. And they said, well, you better talk. We need you. So he got to share the gospel every single time he stood up in front of the company. And I said, man, that's the kind of guy I wanted to follow. He was one of my role models. Well, he also had a great way of motivating people. In the sales business, you have to motivate guys. They, they need motivation all the time. And so when I got in the business, he would send out these monthly reports, and he put all the guys' names and how much you sold in each category and all this. And, and when you're starting out in any business, you're scared to death. You're just shaking. So he would write me a note, and he'd say, um, you're doing great. I'm proud of you. The best is yet to be, Matthew 6.33. Matthew 6.33 says, Seek you first the kingdom of God, and his righteousness, and all these things to be added unto you. But when I got a handwritten note for Warren, meant a lot. Because he handwrote something for me. And I, I was new. I didn't know if I was going to make it or not. And he said, I'm proud of you. That meant so much. We need to have a mentor tell you I'm proud of you. He'd take me to lunch once a month and just let me talk. What's going on in life? What's going on with your kids? What's going on with your office? I'd say, how much time you got? <laughs> because when you're getting started, you're scared to death. Can I make it? Do they believe in me? I don't know much about this product. I'm trying to sell something I don't know much about. He said, you're going to do fine. You're going to do fine. I'm proud of you. You're going to last a long time. Well, after 33 years, I'm still there. <laughs> he was right. So... Um, he was a guy that also shared balance in our lives. He was a man that would say, you know what? I want you to have balance. And every single January, he would bring us in. And he's sitting with every single agent. He said, you know what? I want you to understand. I want you to understand there's balance in life. And he said, these are going to change during your lifetime. He would, of course, set business goals for us. He would also say, I want you to diet, diet and exercise. I want you healthy. I want you working out. He also said, he'd ask every single Christian agent, what are you studying in the Bible? Uh, what ministry are you involved in? Because I don't want any agents that are not just selling insurance, they're playing. They're going to be involved. If you're a believer, you'll be selling and you're going to be working for the Lord. Tell me what ministry you're in and how's it going? So at that time, Kay and I were involved at Family Life Weekend to Remember Marriage Conference. And he wanted to know how the conference was going, how many people came, what our committees looked like, and he followed up. He'd also ask about our finances. He'd ask us about our hobbies, about our family life, when we were taking vacation. And he said, I want you to understand, every, these areas I'm asking you about are going to change. And every year he'd ask me, okay, I want to ask you about your family, ask you about your finances. And he asked us all, he said, keep in mind, when you have children, it changes. When they get in high school, it changes. When they go to college, it changes. And when you get empty nest, it changes. When you're tired, it changes. We still need, those spirit, we need these disciplines in our life, but they're all going to change depending on the season in life you're in. doesn't mean they're not important, 
but you still have to evaluate where you are in those seasons of life. I said, that's very, very important. And um, so 25 years ago, he passed away with cancer. But when I'd go visit him in his house, he would always ask, how, how, was, how was I doing? He would say, I'd ask, how are you doing warning? He'd say, I don't want to talk about me. I want to talk about you and your family and your business. Tell me what ministry you're involved in. And he'd say, let's pray together before you go. And he was dying of cancer. I said, Warren, how are you doing? He said, I'm, I'll be all right. I know where I'm going. I know where I'm going. But you know what? I wonder how you're doing. It excites me to hear what God's doing in your life. Come tell me what's going on. I want to be in the flow of things. Even though I'm sick, I want to know what's going on. So I said, okay, that, is, that, was, that was the second man that I want to share with you about. And the third man was a man I just mentioned. Kay and I were involved with Family Life Ministry for a number of years. There was a founder of Family Life named Dennis Rainey. And Dennis Rainey started Family Life a number of years ago. Started Weekend Remember, came out involved for a number of years. And he told a story about honoring those that respect and we love. And uh, first he started off talking about how you honor your mom and dad with the fourth commandment. And he said, I want you to write memories about your mom and dad. I want you to write things, characteristics they taught you. And then he said, I want to take it one step further. I want you to think about those people that are in your life now that you care about, but you haven't told them for a while. And I want you to sit down and make a list. Maybe it's for their birthday card. Maybe it's their birthday. It's their anniversary. Special event. Maybe you're getting together for Christmas. And he said, don't just write a Christmas card. How many seconds do you look at a Christmas card? About five to ten seconds, the average is. You look at who's it from, goes in a basket. But when you write a person, what happens when you get a personal letter from somebody? You sit and sit down and read it. Sometimes you read it two or three times. My mom and daddy said so they kept mine. They read them over and over again. But daddy had Alzheimer's. It didn't matter. He had, he had read the same thing over and over again. <laughs> But I want to tell you something, you know, when, when you get a letter from somebody that's been typed or texted, they took time to talk to you. They wanted to share with you what you meant. And uh, so that meant a lot to me. So what he said was, when you sit down and you're writing a letter or a card, think about some of the good times you shared together. Think about favorite meals you shared together. Think about jokes you shared together. And some of you repeat over and over again. Right, Bob? <laughs> Time you share together in ministry. And at this church, we are blessed. Because many of us have been in this room and been in ministry for many, many years. And we share a lot of stories. A lot of laughs. Some thorny stories, too, sometimes. But we like to tell stories. We like to tell funny stories, funny stories that start with, do you remember the time when we... And you fill in the blank. <laughs> sometimes there's life lessons that you share with each other. You know what I learned from this ministry? You know what I learned from this experience? And you put that in the letter because you learned from that person, you shared it together. And so when you write a letter like that, think about those things you can share with someone you care about. When you write your next letter, you write your next card. Think about those items, okay? I was thinking about how I'd been encouraged at Lakeview Christian Center through testimonies. Because as I was thinking about this talk, I was thinking about what can give us hope and encouragement. And I started recalling... Years again, I've been here since 1998, and we've been at men's retreats, we've seen altar calls, we've seen testimony times in a variety of other settings, like New Year's Eve testimony, New Year's Eve services. How many of y'all been here at New Year's Eve services? Were you blessed? Were you encouraged? Did you cry? Bring clinic. Why do you think they have clinics across the front of the church? They know we're going to cry. <laughs> but that's good and healthy. Anybody been to Alpha and seen testimonies at Alpha? Alpha retreat. I don't want, I, I, I hate to miss out because there's so many people. You're sitting at a table and you, all of a sudden you start seeing lights starting to come on and you share a testimony. Somebody else shares a testimony and all of a sudden these, these visitors are going, What am I missing out on? And they want to, they come, come, some come around at the retreat. Peter puts the heat on. Man, he puts the hot seat on them. They get, they get saved, you know, because Peter calls them up on Saturday. Come on, Friday night. Come on up. Come on up. But many folks are up in the line up here on Friday night because they want to know about the Savior I've been hearing about for those first seven or eight weeks at Alpha. And they want to come hear about that Jesus. And then when they show their testimony Saturday morning, right after Peter's done, on Saturday morning, they stand up and share. And you look at a face that's come up that you have no idea what they've been going through. You can't tell their life story. But when you hear their life story, you go, they heard this in the last seven or eight weeks and they had had a dramatic 180 turn in life. 
You go, that was a miracle. Because when you hear testimonies, you're seeing testimonies and action. And what encourages you? Testimonies. Because we know that God, it wasn't just by chance. By God's sovereign willing, did miracles in those people's lives that changed them for eternity. Um, I had a, um, I heard Richard Blackaby. I don't know if you've ever heard, anybody heard of Richard Blackaby before with uh, Richard Blackaby and his, and his dad, Henry Blackaby, uh, taught experiencing God. And uh, when he was, a, Richard was a pastor, God laid in his heart to write a note to one of the couples in his church. He was, as most pastors, they get up and pray in the morning or have their devotions and stuff in the morning. And one morning, Richard uh, was laying on his heart. He said, you know, I just, he said, what I do as a habit, he says, I get, the, they, was, they didn't have a big church. He said, I took my church roll and I start praying to the A's and praying to the B's and praying to the C's. And he said, this one morning I was praying, all of a sudden, one name just stuck out to me and I said, I need to write them a note today. Just God said, I need to write them a little note. And he said, I just wrote this short message. God loves you. He knows what you're going through and you can trust him. I thought that was too good. I put it on my desk. I thought that was great. God loves you. He knows what you're going through and you can trust him. We sent this to this couple and the husband called him after he got the mail and he said, Richard, you have no idea how timely your note was. He said, because I went to work today, just like I'd done many other days. When I got to work, I was called into a meeting. The manager indicated there'd been a reduction of force and every man in that room was laid off. And we were struggling. He said, I was very discouraged as I came home. I didn't know what I was gonna tell my wife. When I got to my house, I reached the mailbox and I got this short message from my pastor. God loves you. He knows that you're going through and you can trust him, he said. That's encouragement I needed to go talk to my wife and say, God's going to help us. We're going to make it. We're going to make it. Because God loves us. He knows what I'm going through, and we can trust him. He then said, uh, my son Daniel was uh, 15 years old. And he said, my son Daniel was 15 years old and had insomnia. Anybody ever had insomnia and couldn't sleep at night? Or you had a child crying at night? And you're saying, man, your child's been up, your grandchild's been up, or you've been sick and you couldn't sleep. And... How did you feel? You felt terrible. I mean, you just couldn't hardly function. His son had insomnia, and it was serious. And he said, my son could go 72 hours with that getting, he could make it four or five hours of sleep. He was just miserable. And he'd been talking to his kids about God loves you, has a plan for your life. And he'd been te- they've been in Bible study since they were kids. And he said, my, my 15-year-old son going, Dad, Dad, why must I have insomnia? Somebody did wrong? Is, is, am I like Job? Have I done something wrong? What are we doing? Well, I can't go with this insomnia. They took him to doctors. They had sleep studies, and nobody, no doctor could tell him why the son was having insomnia. He says, I don't know what's going on. But he knew God loved him. So that summer, the youth pastor took 45 youth, and they went to summer camp. And there's still a church, kind of like Sovereign Grace said, a number of churches came together in this camp. They all came together. And on the Thursday night before the, the last night before they left camp, the youth pastors got together and said, you know what? We know something's going on. We, need, we think we need to divide our, our youth up in separate groups and just talk to our people. Just talk to our kids. Get them in a room, talk to our kids. So um, Daniel's youth pastor came in this room kind of like this. And he said, kids, I know something's going on. Something's been going on this week. I know you all been coming with some dear, very difficult things. You came to this camp. Some of some very difficult addictions and problems you came to this camp. So I wonder what's going on in your life. And Daniel stood up and he said, you know, I'm the local insomniac. I can't sleep. I've had a hard time. You all know what I've been going through. It's been hard. I'm glad I'm here, but it's been a really rough several months for me. Well, immediately, a 14-year-old girl in the corner, she stood up and said, I've got to tell you something. And the youth pastor said, yes, tell us what's going on. And she said, well, she said, uh, my mom got divorced. And uh, my stepdad and his two sons moved to our house. And the stepson's got my bedroom, and I was relegated to the basement. And uh, I was just, I was kind of put down the step. But my mom loved her new husband, and his two boys are in my old room, and I'm kind of left out. And she said, I went to a party one night. I did some things I should have never, ever done. I was very embarrassed. And she said, uh, I knew that night I couldn't, from what I'd done, after I got home, I was so embarrassed I couldn't go to school the next day. I said, I'm going to have to take my life. I just can't, I just can't take it. So years ago, they used to have Messenger on, on computer. I don't know if you remember, they used to have me- Messenger. 
And you can see who was online at that time, who was on. And she said, it's uh, 3 o'clock in the morning. I'm just going to take my life. But I just want to talk to one person, just one person before I do. So she went online, just on the computer to see if anybody was online. Of course, Daniel was online. He's up. He's insomniac. He's up. So she said, Daniel, can you talk? He said, sure. I'm up. I might as well talk. <laughs> so he said, what's going on with you? And she said, she told what happened. She said, I did some terrible things. I can't go to school tomorrow, and I'm about to commit suicide. And he said, stop. They live in the same subdivision. He didn't know her very well. They live in the same subdivision. And he said, uh, meet me at the light pole. As soon as you get your clothes, get, meet me at the light pole, and we're going to walk. So he walked around the subdivision for seven times until the sun started coming up. And he just started sharing with her about how God loved her. God had a plan for her. God knew what she was going through, and you can trust him. After seven times, the sun started coming up, and she said, I can make it. And he walked her home. After that, another boy raised his hand, a 17-year-old boy raised his hand, and he said, yes, Pastor, I've got to tell you what happened to me. He said, uh, I've been on drugs. And he said, I can't get away from it. He said, I've been struggling. I'm adopted. My parents didn't really care about me. That's the reason I got on drugs, because I need somebody to give me some attention. My drug friends give me attention. And so I knew I just couldn't do this anymore. And one night I decided I'm going to kill myself. And he said, I got some ice. I started putting my rest. And he said, I decided I'm going to call the Blackaby house. They know me, but I'm, I'm going to call. If, it didn't, if, if it's in two rings, I'm going to take my life. But if, if somebody picks up in two rings, I'm not going to do it. So he called the Blackaby house. And after one ring, Daniel answered. And he said, who is this? 17-year-old kid said, this is so-and-so. And he said, why are you calling me at 4 o'clock in the morning? He said, because I'm in a bad place. I need to talk to somebody. Daniel said, meet me at IHOP at 6 o'clock in the morning. Daniel said, 6 o'clock in the morning. Don't do anything. Meet me at 6 o'clock in the morning. He said, Daniel met him for 6 o'clock in the morning for breakfast. Talked to him, and the boy said, I can make it now. So at the end of camp, the next night, Richard Black met his son getting off the bus. And uh, he said, there's a certain aura about my son. You, could t you know your kids. You know how your kids look. And he said, it wasn't just because he smelled because he hadn't taken a bath all week. There's something different about him. <laughs> Some kids had a real unique air about them. <laughs> my son looked different. He said, son, what's going on, man? He said, well, son, dad, I know why I had insomnia. He said, uh, two kids would not be alive today. If God hadn't given me insomnia, he said, in the middle of the night, they didn't call the pastor. They didn't call the youth pastor. They called me. And two kids in our youth group are here because I had insomnia. I could share with them in the middle of the night. And he said, um, I know why God allowed me to have this. Well, ironically, a few days later, the insomnia went away. And his sleep pattern returned to normal. And Richard said, you know, we don't know why God, used it. God gave him insomnia for so long, but God used him to save two kids' life at that camp. And now his son's in ministry. He said, uh, I think stories are very important, so I wanted to share about Daniel's story tonight. The point is, no matter what you're experiencing in life, watch for opportunities to listen, encourage others around you, and also remember the rose. There's always going to be thorns, but there's also the beauty. But don't give up. Don't ever, ever give up. Beryl. Wow. <laughs> One thing that's been consistent through all the men that have spoken, and I talked to Steve, my buddy Steve, about it. I really wanted this series and felt led for it to be, there's nothing wrong about talking what God can do. Yeah, we need to know that. But I want it to be about what God has done. The rubber meets the road. What has he done? And each of these men in their own way so far, and hopefully we'll do some more of these down the road, and we haven't forgotten about the women. We will do something, okay? We're, we're thinking about it. Pastor Peter and Pete and Belinda and I, we've we got, we got some things coming. Because there's stories that you can share, not fables, tales. They're the grace of God in your life. And that gives people around you just builds them up because, you know, hey, this happened to me or this happened to you. I'm going through the same thing. You know, 
we don't have to always, God doesn't have to run and do anything. He's still God. But it's so neat. Each one of us has a story to tell. Each one, somehow, somewhere along the way, God met you. God meets with you. And as Bob said, God loves you. He knows what you're going through. And to all of you, we're getting ready to end our live stream in just a minute here. We invite you to come and be with us in person. Two weeks from tonight, we'll be back with Pete. And it's a really good subject he's going to talk about. Something near and dear to you. And I look forward to that. We want you to come and be with us. That's the purpose of this. And we're glad at least that you're able through this medium to be able to be a part and a part of our seniors ministry. You know, in July, we'll be starting our eighth year of seniors. Isn't that unbelievable? Eight years. Wow. It's a joy. And it's a joy. Now, to those of you that are here in person, don't jump up and leave. You got a little treat coming. You got a little afterglow by Bob in just a second. And, and to those of you that are live stream, so glad to have you watch us either tonight or later on, whenever you do. You're welcome. Lakeview Christian Center, the latch is always on the outside. And we're glad for you to come and be with us and be a part.